What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. And finally, we've got Ryzen 6000 powered mini PCs. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my mini PCs, especially these APU powered. From Ryzen 3000 up to 5000, but now a lot of our favorite mini PC manufacturers have announced or are about to announce and release Ryzen 6000 powered PCs. And today, I'm really excited because I've got my hands on the brand new B-Link GTR6. And this thing is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to mini PCs. Because this is actually running the Ryzen 9 6900HX. 8 cores, 16 threads, it also utilizes DDR5 RAM. And we've got the brand new RDNA 2 680mi GPU up to 2400 MHz. I've been doing some testing with this mini PC for the past couple days, and I can tell you right now that it is a great performer. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So jumping right into the unboxing, if you do end up picking one of these up, you will get an HDMI cable. I believe we've got a 6 foot and we've got a 1 foot, just in case you want to mount this to the back of your monitor. And these Ryzen 6000, especially the H and the HX variants of these APUs, do pull more power than the older 5000 or even 4000, so we need a bigger power supply, and this comes included with a 120 watt instead of a 90 or even a 65. And one other cool thing that was included with this was a couple different top plates. So we've got the red version here, and they just kind of pop right on and off. I went with the red, but we've also got kind of the stone version, and then a grayish black version. So it's really up to you, you know, we've got a little bit of customization with this. And luckily, with these newer 6000 series PCs, we don't have a gloss finish on the top, so we're not going to scratch it up or get fingerprints on it. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack and USB Type-C. I was really hoping that this was USB 4, but unfortunately, it's just a full-function USB 3.2 Type-C port. I'm sure in the future we will see these mini PCs with USB 4, but right now it was kind of left out. But around back, we do have a lot of I.O. with this mini PC. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two more full-size USB 3.2 ports, two full-size USB 2.0 ports, and as you can see, we've got four HDMI outs on this, and each one of these will support 8K. We can do four 8K displays on this thing, but, uh, you know, running four 8K videos at the same time on this chip uh, might not work out so well but it is fully capable of doing 8K 60fps on a single stream. Now before we move over to the specs, I wanted to give you a look at the internals because they've actually added some new stuff here, like this brand new M.2 SSD cooler. It's got a built-in fan, and this comes out with three screws. It's actually a pretty cool idea. So up top here, we've got the fan, which will pull all of that air out. And uh, around back, we've got an aluminum heat sink with our heat transfer pad, and this will make contact with both of the M.2 SSDs we can add to this unit. And speaking of M.2 SSDs, with this unit here, we've got one NVMe slot and one SATA 3 slot. So uh, we can add more storage to this pretty easily. And by the way, yes, this is using DDR5 RAM. It's running at 4800 megahertz in this unit. So it's really going to help out with GPU performance. Okay, so moving on to the good stuff now, and this is what really makes this PC so special. The new Ryzen 9 6900HX. We haven't seen this in a production mini PC yet. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 GHz, and a boost up to 4.9. These APUs are based on Zen 3 Plus, and this one just happens to be a 45 watt part. And when it comes to RAM with this unit, it utilizes DDR5 running in dual channel up to 4800 MHz. It will support up to 64 GB, but with this one here, I've got 32. 
And in my opinion, the best part about these new 6000 series APUs are the brand new RDNA 2 based iGPU that they use. This one happens to have the Radeon 680M. We've got 12 CUs and a clock up to 2400 MHz because we're on the Ryzen 9 variant. If we were talking about the 6800U, we've got that max clock of 2200 MHz. But keep in mind, we actually might see better performance out of some of the handhelds with the 6800U, given that they're going to be using the LPDDR5 RAM instead of regular old SODAM. That usually runs at 6400 MHz, and right now we're kind of stuck at 4800 MHz on these mini PCs. But either way you look at it, these new RDNA 2 graphics outperform Vega by a mile and a half. And now I'm really excited to jump into a little bit of testing. I'm going to go ahead and boot this up. And uh, one thing I didn't mention is B-Link does like to use their fingerprint sensors, and this one's no different. We've got one right up top, so we can easily log in pretty quickly here. So like I mentioned, I've had a few days to mess around with this, and it's very snappy. The 6900HX is a great little CPU here, and you know, if you wanted to do web browsing, even video editing, photo editing, email checking, using this kind of as an everyday PC, you're not going to run into an issue. We've got more than enough power here with those 8 cores and 16 threads. And right out of the box, this is running at a 45 watt TDP, but from the BIOS, we can actually take it up. Now, one thing I would like to see adjusted, or I need to go in and adjust myself, is the fan curve, given that we do have a higher boost when we're gaming, just to offset that power draw from the CPU and GPU. But uh, real quick, before we jump into the benchmarks and gaming, I wanted to take a look at some 4K video playback. And since the 6900HX is really rated for 8K60 playback, we're not going to have an issue. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 built in here, or you could use that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. But yeah, I mean, just running 4K video on this at 60fps from YouTube, super smooth, no drop frames. And I also went through and I tested Netflix real quick. I don't have a frame counter for that, but I mean, it was very smooth at 4K. Next thing I want to do is jump right into a little bit of PC gaming, and we're going to go with Spider-Man Remastered to start it off with. Okay, so yeah, this actually performed much better than I thought it was gonna. If you've ever tried this on a lower-end PC, or especially an APU, you know how hard this can be to run. We're at 720p, low settings, with FSR set to performance, and we can get an average of around 65 FPS out of this game. Not bad, but we do see some dips under 60, and that's kind of a given with this here. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're at 50 watts on that APU, our GPU is running at 2400 megahertz, and we're not seeing really high temps here. This little system thermal throttles at 94 degrees Celsius, but the new cooler system that they're using here actually works great at these higher wattages. And before we take a look at the benchmarks, I got one more here, World of Warcraft. I always have people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in. 1080p, and from the graphics slider in the game, we're set to number 10, so we're at very high settings here, and we're getting an average over 90 FPS, so yeah, this is another game that's going to be fully playable on this mini PC. Moving over to some benchmarks, and first on the list, we've got Geekbench 5 coming in with a respectable single core of 1,489, and a really great multi of 9,312. Remember, we're working with the mobile APU here. These numbers are looking great. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Here's Night Raid. We got a total score of 26,463. And I also wanted to give you a look at Last Gen's 5900HX, just to give you an idea of what kind of difference we're looking at. And remember, the 5900HX utilizes Vega graphics, and with that, we got a 17,662. So yeah, we're seeing a significant jump here in these GPU benchmarks when it comes to these new RDNA 2 iGPUs. Moving over to Firestrike, total score on this machine, 6,566, and on the 5900HX, 4,057. And the final one here is Time Spy with a really nice 2,852. And on last gen's 5900HX, 1,630. So obviously, we're getting a nice jump in performance on the CPU and GPU when it comes to 6,000 versus 5,000. And it's really expected from a generational jump here. But uh, now I really just want to see how this thing performs with real world gaming. 
So with the rest of the PC games we're going to see running in this video, I've actually got this set at 65 watts instead of 45. There are third party applications that you can do this with or you can do it from the BIOS. And at 65 watts I was kind of expecting to hit thermal throttle really quickly while gaming. But the new cooler that D-Link has implemented in the 6000 series has done a really great job. Witcher 3 performed really well with the 6900HX, 1080p, low settings. I was really surprised that we got an average of 78 FPS out of this. Most of the time we're over 80, but by the end, checking out Afterburner, it was an average of 78. God of War 720p original settings FSR set to performance. We're so close to getting that steady 60 out of it. And this little machine can do it, but we will have to take FSR to ultra performance, which degrades the picture quality by quite a bit. So I just left it at performance to see what it did. And I mean, with V-Sync turned on, as long as I'm not getting screen tearing, I'd be perfectly fine playing this game like this. And finally here, we've got Modern Warfare 2. I just ran the built-in benchmark, and I did run it a few times. We're at 1080p, balanced preset, FSR set to balanced. This was some surprising performance, but you know, when it comes down to it, there are a lot of settings that we can change with this game. But with the settings I used, we got an average of 85 FPS, and with FSR set to balanced, it's actually rendering this game at 720p. I also tried it with FSR set to performance, that was the only other setting I changed, and we got an average of 108 FPS out of it. So there's a lot of tweaking and tuning that we can do just to kind of get this locked at 60 with some really great picture quality. And the final thing I wanted to show off was some high-end emulation, and the first one here is Xbox 360 using the Zinnia emulator. I'm using the Canary build, and over the last few months we've got some amazing updates. Here's Forza 2 running at 60 FPS, and I also tested Red Dead Redemption, another one that'll run at 60 FPS. And by the way, we're only at a 45 watt TDP here, just the stock TDP on this mini PC. Moving over to PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, upscale to 1080p with one of the harder ones to emulate, Skate 3. As you can see, the 6900HX also handles PS3 emulation really well. And the 5000 series mini PCs, especially with the H and the HX series, will pull a little more power than the older 5000 series, but uh, through all of my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. And at idle, we average 17 watts. And through my testing, I did some adjusting on that TDP from 45 up to 65, and on average across the board with all of the games and emulators I tested, total power consumption average while gaming is around 61 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 82 watts. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to pull more wattage, but we're getting significantly more performance out of these RDNA2 APUs. And when it comes to average CPU temps, it's really going to depend on what kind of TDP you're running at. But with that mix of 45 and 65, at idle we averaged 38 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Celsius while gaming, and I was able to hit thermal throttle 6 minutes into a 10 minute Cinebench R23 test. But while gaming, we didn't go over 84 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to tell you right now, the fan on this is not ramping up to 100%. It still stayed pretty quiet, so we got some more adjusting that we can do from the BIOS with this. But in the end, when it comes to these mini PCs powered by Ryzen that rely on iGPUs, this is the most powerful that we've tested so far, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see more powerful units come down the road. But being a first release here from B-Link on Ryzen 6000, I think this is an awesome little PC. Now I will have at least one more video coming up with this PC. I want to install SteamOS on it and see how it performs. So if there's any specific games you want to see running, let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on the GTR 6. I mean, is this something that you'd be interested in given the power it's putting out? Was the performance not good enough? Uh, are you going to wait till the next revision of Ryzen? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you're interested in learning more about the B-Link GTR 6, links for that will be in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.